Hello Internet, my name's Ryan and this is Ryan Builds Wheels. This video is sponsored by Pete. He runs spokesfromryan.com where you can buy spokes and nipples to the trade and the public at great prices online. Visit now. Oh God, oh God, I started a new YouTube channel and I haven't even uploaded anything in over a month. Viewers want new content. What the hell am I gonna do? All right, don't panic. I know, our belt, we do that video on those crazy fucking string wheels that we were doing. Hey, look, look, they're there. We can do something about these. No, wait, they've taken for fucking ever. This is ridiculous. The video is nearly 20 minutes long. People won't watch that. You've just started out. Okay, don't panic. Wait a minute, what's in here? Oh, colourful things. Oh, there's got to be something in there. Uh, oh, yeah. Look at that. Nipples. Yeah. All right. Let's do that. Nipples. Quick. Get, get them out. Everyone loves nipples. We're doing videos about nipples and boat washers and stuff like that. And we'll, we'll explain all how that works. No one knows what washers they need to use. Do they use these ones? Do they use these ones? What the hell do they all mean? And how does it all relate to ERD and rim measurements? Let's find out. A few moments later. Belgium-based spoke manufacturer Sapim make a range of excellent spokes. They're pretty much the only spoke that I'll ever use here in-house, unless the need for something proprietary comes up. They also make an excellent range of nipples, but there's a lot of them. Today, I'm going to talk you through them. The first question that people often ask is whether to go with brass or alloy nipples. This question comes up time and time again, and I'll be going into it much deeper in a future video. For now though, let's just say that brass nipples are heavier and cheaper, whereas alloy nipples are lighter, more expensive, and available in a range of colours. Let's take a look at some weights. A 12mm brass nipple, 0.9 grams. The same nipple in aluminium, 0.35. So you can see that across a whole 64 spoke wheel set, weight savings can be considerable. Sapim's alloy nipples are excellent and the best on the market. They're made from a superior or better suited grade of aluminium than any others that I've come across, to wit a 7075 series T6 heat treated alloy. Other nipples out there, such as unfortunately some of DT Swiss's, can strip far too easily in my opinion. I've never had this problem with Sapim's nipples. They're double hard anodized and available in a range of blingy colours. Silver, black, red, orange, gold, or yellow. Two types of green, blue and purple. Mmm. The majority of Sapin's nipples also come with their Polyax head. Pretty simple, as you can see from my terrible drawing. In short, Polyax means that the head of the nipple is curved as opposed to straight, allowing it to better align within rims and allowing for a wider range of spoke entry angles. Polyax nipples safely give a range of up to eight or nine degrees of movement in this area. Spoke entry angles can't be too high or they'll place stress on the junction between the spoke and the nipple. This can lead to breakages and it's important to consider this when designing certain wheels, especially stuff like e-bike or hub driven motors. As well as the square flats given for truing most wheels, Sapim also offer two types of internal drive nipples. This means that you can true wheels without the need to touch the nipple flats with a wrench. It's worth noting here that I regularly use Sapim's double square nipples as a direct replacement for DT Swiss's Squawks nipples. DT Swiss state that you must use their Squawks nipples on their high-end range of PHR washer reinforced rims. However, I'm not a fan of them, and they're only available in black, silver, maybe red. What if you want a little bit more bling? Unfortunately, over the years, I found that standard Polyax nipples just don't play ball with PHR rims. I've often seen them snap, and I've had to stop using them. That's a bummer both for me and for customers. Fortunately, double square nipples don't suffer this fate, in part due to the extra spoke reinforcement, but also because, as you can see here, they have a slightly different shoulder or head profile to a standard Polyax. Use double squares if you're ever going to be building a DT Swiss PHR reinforced rim. Which brings me on to internal or hidden nipples. Some people even call them upside down nipples. They go inside the rim rather than the outside the rim. Outside, inside. 
Why would you do this? It looks cleaner. Some people say it's mildly more aerodynamic. That's marginal at best. Oh yeah, and let's talk about Sapim's sealed system. That's that little dimple you see on the nipple shank and stands for self-interlocking system. The dimple mechanically alters the threads inside of the nipple and stops the spoke or nipple from unwinding. This can also be achieved in several other ways, which I'll go into in the future. Let's take a quick look inside. This is the best shot that I can get of the inside of a seal's nipple, and as you can see, the threads are somewhat deformed as you reach that area. Nipples are harder to turn once you get past this, so there's a degree of locking going on, but there's other ways to achieve this, and I've never really found it necessary. But I do know that several top-tier builders and mechanics on the Downhill World Cup circuit swear by these nipples. Which brings us to a discussion about thread length. As you'll see, 12, 14, and double square nipples, threads all start in the same place. On a 16mm sapphire nipple, the threads start a couple of mil beforehand, meaning that it can be a great way to get you out of a tight spot in an emergency. However, with all nipples, especially aluminium, what you really need is you need to make sure that your spokes end up being above this shoulder and preferably fully inside this area here. Even a little beyond is quite fine. I'll go into that in another video. So don't use longer nipples and the expectation of having longer threads as a way to attempt to correct for spokes that are too short. You can see that you can always correct for spokes that are too long using a double square and that an internal nipple means that your spokes are going to be much longer. Let's take a look at that. ERD sticks are a handy and quick way to measure rim dimension, specifically a dimension that wheel builders often call effective rim diameter. In this case, I've got two spokes, each one cut to 150mm with the nipple that I intend to use on the end. I'll place them in a rim, add up their lengths, totaling 300mm, measure the gap between them. That plus 300mm will give me effective rim diameter. Simple, right? You can see how these two different nipple types would give vastly different requirements for spoke length. It's a simple way of showing you that ERD is effective rim diameter and is not a fixed length. Sapim also offer a range of washers. We have oval washers in small and large, mostly used for reinforcing or reducing friction on single wall vintage builds. You have round washers, which are again just a standard flat washer used for reducing friction. You find them on some carbon builds, very rarely used on alloy. These are actually hub washers. I'll show you that any moment. Uh, we then have HM and MG washers. HM washers are purely used to reduce friction during builds and do not act as a rim reinforcement. You'll see that this area here is, is relatively sharp and conical, uh, whereas MG washers are specifically built for rim reinforcement, but due to their shape can only be used on rims with a flat spoke bed profile. Here's an example of MG washers in a rim with a flat spoke bed. You couldn't use these washers on something with a curved spoke bed. Obviously that can sometimes be tricky to tell without cutting your rims open, so user beware. Of course, washers do have a thickness and so they will change your ERD measurements. It's worthwhile measuring ERD with the washers you intend to use added. Sometimes this is insignificant, but with thicker washes, such as the MG, you'll see that its total width is 1.88mm. Uh, they are mirrored, and so they'll add nearly 2mm in total. The little brass washers that you've seen are actually hub washers. They are used to pack out the flange of a hub and give a tighter fit in between spoke and hub. Uh, this is shown in a fairly modern hub with a wide flange, and they aren't necessary. But you can see how they'd be useful in packing out thinner steel flanges on older vintage hub models. Well, I sure hope you've enjoyed listening to me talk about nipples. It's been great. Thanks very much for tuning in. You coming here means an awful lot, and I'll try getting a video out again soon. Thank you.